up everyone for the win attach you here you know what it is thank you very much for tuning into this video now before we go ahead and get straight into this video i'm going to go ahead and get the stribberish out of the way as quickly as possible if you guys do like the video at the end please be sure to leave us with a thumbs up also please be sure to hit that subscribe button if you do around here and of course the notification bell and last but not least check out the description box down below you don't want to be missing out on any of those links because it basically describes everything as a channel on what we are and who we are as a channel so go ahead and check out that description box now without further ado as you can tell based off of the title of this video this is the destruction warlock guide for battle for azeroth now we've done the same already for demonology covering all aspects of this class and spec combination so now we're going to be doing the same thing for destruction and we will also be doing another one for affliction coming up in the later week or so so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this guide. We're going to dive on into stats, gems and enchants and consumables, the rotation and talents, and this will give you the background and basic knowledge on how to play a Destruction Warlock. So without further ado, let's get to it. Hey everybody, so starting off with stats. Now this is kind of where the Demonology Guide went crazy, and this is kind of how we we build up from our stats our stats are like the core of your class and spec no matter what class and spec you're playing in the game of world warcraft stats are your core that's like kind of what you're going to strive for and everything else so that's kind of like a why i like to start off with stats so with destruction warlock however i played it on alpha i played it on beta and i've also played it on live stats haven't changed too much and they are not as hectic or can be as hectic as demonology now when I say hectic is in demonology, it's not really that bad for demo. For those of you guys that have watched it, you'll understand what I mean. But for those of you guys that haven't, go ahead and check it out. It, it's it's not bad. It's just there's a couple of uh, stat differences there where they're very very similar. So that's pretty much what I meant by that. But without further ado, so the stat choices for a destruction warlock, of course, just like every other warlock, you want to go ahead and stack intellect as much as possible. Next stat you're going to be wanting to focus on is haste, haste, and haste, and that is going to be your main secondary stat for a destruction warlock, because you're going to be needing that to go ahead and get your fast chaos bolt cast off them. And last but not least, crit over versatility over mastery. Uh, that is basically the key for a destruction warlock. Uh, mastery is so 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 useless. It is on RNG. It is it's a pointless stat to have. And you know what's a useless stat when you put it after versatility in the stat ratios. So without further ado, again, intellect, over haste, over crit, over versatility, and mastery. Next up, we're going to go ahead and get into gems, enchants, and consumables. So now that we're going to be getting into gems, enchants, and consumables, the main gem, just like most is the Kraken's Eye of Intellect. And this is going to give you an increase in intellect. And the main reason why this is going to be your main gem is this is a unique equipped item. You can only have one. So uh, choose wisely. Just make sure you have it on one of your pieces of gear. And then after that, the other gems you're going to want to go ahead and stack are Quick Owl's Eye, which is going to grant you uh, an increase in your haste. Uh, when it comes to enchants, your enchant ring enchant will be Pact of Haste, which of course is increasing haste as well as enchant weapon for quick navigation which in short is also going to increase haste uh the potion of choice for destruction warlock is battle potion of intellect which is of course an increase in intellect uh your flask choice will be flask of endless fathoms which will be an increase in intellect uh your food choice will be bountiful captain's feast if available uh whether if you have it for the group or whether someone else puts that out Otherwise, you're going to want to go ahead and keep handy in your bag space. Swamp, fish, and chips. God damn, mate. Can I get a little bit of order of them fish and chips, fam? Increase in haste. Uh, and last but not least, of course, that annoying battle scarred augment rune that every expansion as of late has had. Yes, you got to farm them. You can also purchase them. Just make sure you have them. This is also an on-use item, so once you've used it, it's gone. It is not one of those um, carry-on overuse items that you can eventually get through reputation later in an expansion. This is one of those annoying ones. So make sure you have battle-scarred runes uh, 
on stack and on hold in your bag space. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and uh, check out the talents for Destruction Warlock. All right, everybody, so let's go ahead and dive straight into uh, tier one here. As you guys can see, we've got flashover, conflagrate deals 25% increased damage and grants an additional charge of backtrack. Eradication, Chaos Bolt increases the damage you deal to the target by 10% for the next seven seconds. And last but not least, Soul Fire. Uh, burns the enemy's soul, dealing about 4k fire damage. Cooldown is reduced by 2 seconds for every soul shard you spent. So, I like to dive on into my talents, uh, explain why I choose what I choose, and uh, some choices are very, very simple. I'm not going to go too far into depth on that. Um, I will give you an example on single target and AoE if a uh, tier is needed, and also uh, PvP and PvE, or if it's just one for both, I will go ahead and explain that. So. That's the case for tier 1. I've uh, chosen Flashover for both PvP and PvE, and the reason being is uh, Flashover is a, uh, a slight DPS increase than Eradication on uh, both PvP and PvE. There is no AoE uh, situations here too much in tier 1, uh, so Flashover does outweigh Eradication. And then when it comes to Soul Fire, it is an extra ability, um, which sometimes is a, is a plus. But in this case, it is a huge negative, and Soul Fire just is currently lacking in damage increases, and it's just a, it's a pointless talent in this tier. Um, flashover and Radication are very close, but Flashover does have the edge in uh, DPS increase, which is basically what Tier One is all about. Next up in Tier Two, we've got Reverse Entropy. Your spells have a chance to grant your uh, uh, grant you 15% haste for eight seconds. Got Infernal Combustion, Chaos Bolt consumes up to 5 seconds of Emulate's damage over time effect on your target, instantly dealing that much damage. And Shadow Burn, uh, blast the target for about uh, 2300 Shadow Flame damage if the target dies within 5 seconds and yields experience or honor. Uh, Shadow Burn's cooldown is reset. So, this tier for tier 2, it also generates 3 Soul Shard Fragments for those of you wondering and has a maximum of 2 charges. Um, for those of you wondering, when it comes to tier 2, it, it's very straightforward. Um, there is not really too much AoE similar to uh, tier 1. And uh, basically, I'm going to go ahead and state Infernal Combustion is as useless as Soul Fire. Um, you don't want it, you don't need it, so just put that to the side and focus on the other two. And the reason why I say focus on the other two is Reverse Entropy is an absolute awesome talent. It usually stays up all the time. I usually have that 15% hey stop stacked no matter what. Um, it's always it's always there. I've noticed it's it's a very high proc rate. And then um, I suggest you choose uh, reverse entropy for PVE situations. However, for PVP situations, I suggest you go shadow burn. Uh, shadow burn is a really really nice uh, damage increase. It is an automatic snap of a finger, instant cast. So if you need that extra boost of damage. Shadow Burn is going to come in a lot of handy situations when it comes to PvP. It lets you cast uh, Chaos Bolts a lot faster. And of course, you can also get that proc if a target dies within 5 seconds and yields experience or honor. Shadow Burn's cooldown is reset and you can keep spamming that onto other um, corpses uh, that are going to be in your area very, very soon. Next up, we've got Tier 3, very similar to uh, basically my Demonology setup because it's the exact same tier. Uh, we've got Demon Skin, uh, your soul leech absorption that now passively recharges at a rate of 0.5% of maximum health every one second and may now absorb up to 15% of maximum health. You got Burning Rush increases movement speed by 50% but also damages you for 4% of your maximum health every one second. Movement and pairing effects may not reduce you below 100% of normal movement speed lasts until cancelled. And last but not least, Dark Pack sacrifices 20% of your current health to shield you for 250% of the sacrifice health for 20 seconds usable while uh, suffering from control impairing effects. Now, um, pretty much, uh, Dark Pact is a really, really nice tool. It used to sacrifice your demons, but it uh, sacrifices your current health. Not a huge fan of Dark Pact the way it currently is set up. I find Demon Skin a lot better also because it is a passive. So uh, for this tier, overall, for both PvP and PvE situations, I really suggest you just go ahead and uh, take Demon Skin. Um, because overall, it, it, it's a very close to Dark Pack. But I mean, I like Demon Skin a little bit better than uh, Dark Pack. 
Now, uh, Burning Rush is also an amazing talent, especially for PvE situations. I don't suggest for PvP at all, but for PvE situations, if you do need to go ahead and uh, get that extra increase in your movement speed, uh, for PvE, Burning Rush is definitely usable and a very good talent to have. Next up, we've got Tier 4, which is a very weird tier set for uh destruction uh we got inferno rain of fire damage has a 20 percent chance to generate a soul shard fragment uh fire and brimstone incinerate now also hits all enemies near your target for 40 percent damage until and uh generates one soul shard fragment for each additional enemy hit as well as cataclysm calls forth a cataclysm at the target location dealing about 7k shadow flame damage to all enemies within eight yards and inflicting them with immolate so this is an AoE set, as you guys can see. Inferno is trash. Uh, it doesn't increase your AoE whatsoever, and it gives you a chance to generate a soul shard. And it's just really bad. Uh, basically, you're going to want to go Cataclysm in every single situation in PvP. Because Fire and Brimstone just makes no sense. And uh, when it comes to single target for PvE, you're only going to go Cataclysm because, I mean, these two don't really increase your single target DPS. Cataclysm actually does. It's pretty decent and I like it. Uh, however, for AoE situations in PvE, you're going to want to definitely go Fire and Brimstone because that does outweigh Cataclysm. But I mean, they're very, very close, so you can go ahead and choose whatever you want. You can just basically set this talent uh, tier for just Cataclysm and never have to change it. But if you do want that uh, big boy DPS in an AoE situation, in raiding or dungeons, in any PvE situation, go ahead and hit up Fire and Brimstone. But single target, PvE, as well as PvP, Cataclysm is the way to go. Next up, we got Tier 5, which uh, is the same basically setup for Demonology. But, however, we're going to go over it anyways. Dark Fury reduces the cooldown of Shadow Fury by 15 seconds. More of the Coil horrifies an uh, enemy target into flame and capicating them for 3 seconds. Healing you for 20% of your maximum health, and Demonic Circle summons a circle for 15 se uh, 15 minutes. Sorry, uh, cast Demonic Circle, teleport to teleport to its location. It's the, it's a, it's the, it's the basic gateway for a warlock. For those of you guys wondering, it's been around in the game for God knows how long. So, basically, all of these are useful in a lot of situations, and it's up to you whether you and how you want to use them. Overall, for both PVE and PVP. Um, I am always going to be going Demonic Circle. I, I usually stay with Demonic Circle in all situations. Some other situations call for Mortal Coil or Dark Fury, but I usually stick with Demonic Circle because it is the best out of the three. However, uh, Mortal Coil does have its benefits in PvE, I guess. It's rare, but it does have its benefits. You get that, I mean, you're not going to incapacate really anything in PvE with Mortal Coil, but that 20% health buff as a defensive sh thing, I guess. You can use it. I mean, I've done it before. I'm not going to lie. That's why I think about it all the time. Um, when you're on that boss and you're trying to kill it, and let's say it's it's a bo it's a new boss that you're trying to kill, and you just keep wiping and wiping, but there's that one attempt where you get it to like 3%. Everybody's dying and dying and dying. You're like the last warlock alive. You put your... You, you summon your void, void lord or whatever. Put it as a tank pet. You go run away, get that minor DPS that you can, use a mortal coil to heal yourself because you needed it, and you win, and you're the hero for life. That's when mortal coil comes into handy. And how many chances are you going to get like that? Not many. But in my days, I've seen a lot of those chances, and I actually some I use mortal coil more than often in PVE situations. It's it's I've I've seen it work. They're just just ignore it. But I've seen it work. Or in PvP, of course, it's a great defensive, especially in 1v1 situations and duels and all that stuff. You get that extra health, especially facing off against a melee. You know how annoying those guys are. And then, of course, uh, Dark Fury reduces the cooldown of Shadow Fury. That's absolutely a must in a PvE uh, fight where you are in dire need of stunning a ton of adds uh, very, very short periods of time. So that's when Dark Fury comes into handy. So, Dark Fury, PvE, adds... Um, Mortal Coil, PvP, nice uh, incapacations, and nice CC. 
Um, you can also use Dark Fury for PvP CC as well. Um, I'm a huge fan of it, and especially in AoE situations, but overall, Demonic Circle is the way to go. Next up, Tier 6, we've got Roaring Blaze. Conflagrate burns a target for an additional 2,000 fire damage over 6 seconds. Grimuir of Sup. While you have an Infernal active, every Soul Shard you spend increases the damage of your Chaos Bolt by 8%. Grimmier of Sack sacrifices your demon pet for power gaining its command demon ability and causing the spells to sometimes also deal 1390 additional shadow damage last one hour or until a summoned demon pet. So, Roaring Blaze isn't good. I'm gonna ignore it. It's just not compared to the other two. Uh, Grimmier of Supremacy is my must and my go to for uh, PvE. Uh, you can pop that Grimmio of Supremacy uh, with your Summon Infernal and you're going to get some nice Chaos Bolt damage. Um, it is an increase in damage compared to the other three in PvE situations and it is the only increase in uh, damage in PvE situations. You can time it up with a lot of procs, you can time it up with uh, a lot of trinkets, your potion, bloodlust, you name it, you got it. It's a very, very nice talent. Um, Grimmier of Sacrifice, however, is not good for PvE situations compared to SUP. However, uh, a lot of Destruction PvP Warlocks like Sacrifice. I'm still a fan of Supremacy in PvP, so that's just my opinion. Uh, you can take it where you leave it. Uh, that increase in DPS and being able to explode with my cooldowns, if you will, and make sure I get that one-shot macro going off. You can pull one off with Grimmio of Supremacy over Grimmio of Sack, which is kind of like an overall DPS increase. Grimmio of Supremacy is a burst increase, let's put it that way. Last but not least, we've got Tier 7, and it is actually a very, very easy uh, talent tree to go ahead and uh, deal with as in, a, as in a, the rest of the tiers. Uh, Soul Conduit, every Soul Charge you spend has a 15% chance to be re refunded. It's an overall decent talent. No cons, no pros, it's if you want it, take it, but there's better talents, so I'll just let you know that. Uh, Dark Soul Instability infuses your soul with unstable power, increasing crit chance by 30%. I mean, it, it's, 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 it's an increase, I'm not going to lie. However, channel demon fire in every situation, PvP, PvE, AoE, and single target is the best to go for it. Launches 15 bolts of Bellfire over 2.9 seconds at random targets afflicted by your Immolate within their 40 yards. Each bolt deals uh, about 636 fire damage to the target and 278 fire damage to nearby enemies. Very, very nice talent to have and it is an in a single target increase, an AoE increase uh, for both PvE and PvP situations. Next up, we're going to go ahead and go over uh, PvP talents. As you guys know, I love to PvP. I've been playing World of Warcraft for 13 years. I PvP in different ways than most. Um, so you can take my PvP talents with a grain of salt. Uh, I'll just basically say that. For those of you that tuned into my Demonology video, my Demonology guide, you'll know why. My PvE setups and my PvP talents, I give you guys the best situations that you guys can do. Now when it comes to the actual straightforward PvP talents, I go a little bit crazy because I just like to do that. So without further ado, starting off with the main one, you can either have Relentless which replaces Honorable Medallion, duration of incoming crowd control effects reduced by 20% does not stack with similar effects as shit. Places on a road medallion adaptation removes any loss of control effect with a duration of five seconds or more. This effect can only occur once every one minute. There's a lot of situations where you're going to want to sit out a CC because you know you're not going to take any damage. You know your team's in a good situation. So adaptation isn't really the best. Gladiator's medallion is where it's at because you have total control on which CCs you're going to be handling and getting out of. Removes all movement, impairing effects, and all effects which cause loss of control of your character while in PvP combat simple as that that's the way to go there's no ifs ands or buts next up you've got focused chaos chaos bolt damage is increased by 65 percent hells yes but no longer strikes additional targets afflicted by habit hells no I'm not happy about that i like the increase one shot macros here we go for duels that's great but for most pvp situations i'm not a fan of it Fell Fissure. Chaos Bolt creates a 5 yard wide eruption of Fell Fire under the target reducing movement speed by 50% and reducing all healing received by 25% on all enemies within the Fissure. 
uh, lasts about six seconds. So I really am a huge fan of this talent, which is why I currently use it, which is why I currently have it. Uh, that movement speed reduction, especially facing in arenas, you facing uh, double melee, you want to keep them away from you, that's going to be really nice. And of course, uh, that 25% uh, less healing received is also a great uh, benefit as well. Entrenched in Flames. Camouflage roots the enemy target for 3 seconds. This effect does not break from damage. Cool talent, not, not going to lie. It's a root that does not break, so very, very cool talent. Uh, Curse of Fragility uh, reduces the target's maximum health by up to 15% for 10 seconds. Curse of Tongues forces the target to speak in the demonic, increasing uh, casting time of all spells by 30% for 10 seconds. And Curse of Weakness reduces the, tar the target's physical damage dealt by 25% for 10 seconds. Those are universally good talents, but they're just not talents that I'm going to be choosing. Nether Ward, a very, very nice defensive talent, which most Warlocks do like to choose. I'm just not a fan of how long it lasts. Surrounds the caster with a shield that lasts 3 seconds, reflecting all harmful spells cast on you. I can usually deal with spell casters very well as a warlock. So, I mean, I'm not... I don't see the point of nether ward, to be honest with you. Essence Drain. Whenever you heal yourself with drain life, the enemy target deals 5% reduced damage to you for 6 seconds and stacks up to 5 times. Very, very nice defensive. Uh, casting circle, uh, not a fan of it, but summons a casting circle for 8 seconds uh, while within the casting circle you are immune to silence and interrupt effect. Uh, learning casting circle causes unending resolve to no longer grant the immunity to silence and interrupt effect. You already have unending resolve, what the fuck do you need casting circle for? It's a little bit better than unending resolve, but it's still, like, why? You, uh, it's not a, you're taking away my defensive for reducing CC? Nah, I'm not a fan of that. Then the next up, we got, uh, Go ahead and just pop it up over here. Cremation. Uh, Conflagrate deals up to an additional 3% of the target's maximum health. That's also another DPS increase in fire damage if the target is affected by your immolate. So, huge fan of that. All your targets better be affected by immolate. That's an extra 3% DPS increase uh, for your one-shot macros as a destruction warlock. Y'all know what's up. And Bane of Havoc. Absolutely love this. Curses the ground with a demonic bane, tossing all of your single target spells to also strike targets marked with the bane now the reason why i like this is uh because it it does also it does replace uh habit but the reason why i like this is i'm a huge fan of battlegrounds so if there's like areas where it's also a 40 yard range so if there's areas where there's a lot of people which most in battlegrounds you do find people um i yeah you can have freaking fun and top the meters by godzillions of dps with bane of havoc Absolutely fun, but I mean of course in like arenas and duels you're gonna want to go with something else Alrighty everybody the best part of the video. We're gonna be getting into the rotation for both PvP and PvE AoE and single target so situations. Uh, they're basically the same um, In PvP it's a little bit different of course because it's you have to worry about crowd control enemy players Smart AIs all that type of stuff. So your rotation isn't simply a rotation, but Anyways, this is what you can kind of relate to or relate to um, when playing PvP. So, for the single target spec of a Destruction Warlock, I am rocking Flashover, Reverse Entropy, Demon Skin Cataclysm, Demonic Circle, Grimoire of Supremacy, and Channel Demon Fire. So, I'm going to be going over the basics of a single target rotation. I will be not using a major cooldown such as potions, uh, trinkets and all that stuff. I've moved those to the side. We're just going to focus on the focus on the spells and uh, main situations that uh, we will be in using our single target destruction warlock rotation. So without further ado, let's get to it. So now the rotation for single target and destruction is very very easy. Um, you're going to want to keep your imp out at all times unless uh, there's a situation where you do need to uh, interrupt or disrupt uh, an enemy spell cast and of course you're going to want your fell hunter or your observer out but in all situations you're going to want your fell imp out and or if you're questing and you need a tank your void lord you, you get it just keep your goddamn imp out fam so basically to the single target rotation you're going to want to keep immolate up at all given times on the target use conflagrate when you have two charges uh, spam incinerate as your filler chaos bolt. I like to do every th when you have three plus uh, soul shards So go ahead and uh, use chaos bolt when you have three plus soul shards or embers whatever you guys want to call them um, 
for single target, you do use Cataclysm and Channel Demon Fire, which are two AoE abilities. Um, so I'm going to be using that in my single target rotation. You use them on cooldown. And then, of course, uh, Summon Infernal is going to be your main cooldown, which is going to be an increase in your DPS as well, of course. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. We're going to start off by casting Immolate, keeping that up at all times. Conflagrate because I have two charges. And Spam Incinerate until I have three plus soul shards, which I currently have right now. Cast Chaos Bolt again, Channel Demon Fire on cooldown, Cataclysm on cooldown, and basically I have another charge of uh, Conflagrate, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. Spam Incinerate on, uh, as my filler, but now that I'm back, I gotta get uh, Conflagrate back casted. Let's go ahead and use uh, Chaos Bolt. Spam Incinerate, and it's as simple as that. Demon Fire off cooldown, Cataclysm off cooldown and so on and so forth and then of course when you're ready channel your goddamn inner demons and bring out your infernal as your major cooldown alright so when it comes to the AOE uh, rotation it is exactly the same as single target the only difference is immolate needs to be weaved on all targets so uh, multi dot with immolate uh, you're going to be uh, swapping out your soul sard usage from chaos bolt into rain of fire however uh, when you do use Havoc, I strongly suggest if you do have Chaos Bolts on handy to go ahead and use Chaos Bolts uh, incorporated with Havoc. As well as, of course, Demon Fire is also your other AoE which you'll be using after you have multi-dotted uh, with Immolate. Now, we have swapped out, like I said earlier, Cataclysm to uh, Fire and Brimstone. Uh, incinerate your uh, single target ability. Hits all enemies with it, uh, that are near your target. I strongly suggest, like I said earlier, I like Bane of Havoc, but uh, that's kind of uh, when I'm using my single targets uh, setup with uh, Cataclysm. So that's usually when I would take Bane of Havoc, but if you want, you can go ahead and swap out Bane of Havoc for Fire, Fire and Brimstone, which is pretty much the same thing, and uh, choose a different talent. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. So, we're going to weave Immolate multi dot. Let's go ahead and do that. We have three plus soul shards, so Reign of Fire is key. Channel Demon Fire on cooldown. Now I need to go ahead and uh, burn up some uh, embers. So let's go ahead and use our single target rotation. And I have Havoc, so we're gonna go ahead and use Havoc with uh, incorporating that with uh, Chaos, double Chaos Bolt real quick. And then of course I gotta reweave and multi-dot with Immolate. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure we do that as well. Uh, Demon Fire is off cooldown, so let's go ahead and cast that. Havoc is currently on cooldown, so we're now able to cast Rain of Fire. And it's pretty much as simple as that. Single target rotation into basically using Havoc uh, off of cooldown, using Demon Fire off of cooldown, and then last but not least, just using Rain of Fire uh, during all other situations once Havoc and Demon Fire are on cooldown. Alrighty, everybody. That is it. We have covered everything for a Destruction Warlock. Got questions? Post down below. I've said all of this in the beginning of the video, so I'm not going to go ahead and waste your time now. I'm just going to go ahead and leave you guys off with a thank you very much for tuning in. Catch you guys around, and peace out.